so this is the addressing. I'm going to squeeze it in up here. IP address. IP address? IP address. That's what we're doing now? Well, that's what all this is. Okay. <clears throat> we are saying, remember, we're breaking it down. And what's the addressing? What is the hardware that functions at this layer? And what does data look like at this layer? And we can knock these next two out pretty quick. The biggest part of the network layer is understanding the IP addressing. Um, so over here, uh, what the data looked like was called a frame. And the frame was the data, which is called the payload, the FCS and the CRC, and the source and, source and destination MAC address. <clears throat> so I'm going to draw a small version of that here. So here's my data. And here's my little encapsulation. And it's the source MAC, the destination MAC, the CRC, and the FCS. Remember that's the frame check sequence and the cyclic redundancy check. And then I said, this all happens kind of like Morse code. It comes in a, in a straight line a piece at a time. But to help us understand what encapsulation is, we draw it as if we were sending a package. <coughs> now this is pretty easy. Um, all we do is we take a frame and we add a source IP address and the destination IP address. And the name of this, the PDU, it's called a packet. So basically everything gets packaged up as a packet to get put out onto the network. But when a device receives the packet, depending on that device, it then tears open the packet and only looks at the parts that it's concerned with. So that means when a switch receives a packet, it tears open that packet and only looks at the frame, or the MAC addresses and CRC and FCS. That's all that that looks at. So that's actually pretty simple to go from a frame to a packet. And that's what data looks like at this layer. Now the last one is, what is the hardware that functions at this layer? And there's actually two pieces of hardware. Uh, one is an older one that we don't really use anymore. You might see it in some corporate places now and then, but not really. And then, of course, the more important one. So the more important one is called a router. The one that we don't really use anymore is called a browser with a little B on the front. Router. And the router... And the router has a nickname for a function that it does called a gateway. Now, not all routers are gateways. They're only a gateway to the computers that are on its network. So any computer that has to go through that router to get out of its network, then it's a gateway. Now, if you need to go from your network pass through your gateway to go out onto the internet. If you have to pass through five or six routers to get to where you're going, you have your source router, your source gateway, and your destination address. You've got to pass through their gateway. But there's some routers in between that you might have to hit. These routers in between have a nickname. So if it's not your gateway and it's not your destination, the routers in between are called hops. So you can imagine, I'm on one side of the river and I need to get to the other side of the river. That's my destination. And in between me, there's some stones. Those would be those routers. And I'm going to hop across the river by jumping on those stones to get across. So the gateway is on one side of the river and the destination's on the other. And the routers in the middle are hops that I would have to go through to get to the other side. All right, so a router is responsible for a couple of things. Um, one of the things it does is it allows us to connect different types of network architecture. What that means is if there's some different cabling types 
between two different networks, you can plug those in together. If there's some different uh, platforms that are being used, for instance, uh, Apple's Macintosh stuff and uh, Novell and PCs, of course, um, or my Android phone that runs Linux or some of my computers that might run Linux, it allows for these to be this information to be packaged up and delivered from one place to another, and the devices don't even care that it's two different types of devices using two different operating systems and all of that. So the gateway uh, do the transfer to make it where they to work. That's right. Uh, it just is the well, the, a router can. Gateway is just a nickname for a router that's the last router on the way out of my network. Or the first router on the way into my network. So, the the gateway is the one what does all the changes. The router does. The router. Yeah, because gateway is a nickname for a router right. that's doing a specific job, and that is it's the borderline between my local area network and the wide area network. But a router, yes, does everything that you just said. It's just that. All routers can do that, but all routers are not gateways. They're not, they're not programmed to do that. Yes, they are. It's just that they won't need to. All routers do that, but all routers are not gateways. All people have ears and nose and a mouth, but all people don't speak English. Okay. So, um. all routers connect different network architectures, but all routers are not gateways. Gateway is a nickname given to the last router on the way out of your network, your local area network, into the wide area network. Okay. So it's a perspective nickname. Because my gateway is over there in that office, but the gateway at my house is in my house. But that router in there is not the gateway from my house. Right, I understand. Right, that. that's the I, difference. I, I the understand two. that. Now, all the routers between my house here and the school to get from my house to the school are called hops. Now, how do you say this? Do a router have to be? Um, do you have to go in there and program it? Yes and no. Okay. The reason is because we didn't really say what kind of router. If, <clears throat> if you get a router from your internet service provider, it's going to come set up a certain way. Right. And that might be okay for you. But if they gave you a router and it only has one connection on the back, and you're like, I, I got four computers in my house. That means you need to go to the store and buy another router that allows for more connections. Especially if you don't want to use wired. Because you could just get a switch, run the step router to the switch and then the switch will allow you to connect multiple computers on a network. Right. But if you wanted to get a router that had switching functions and you want your router to do the work, then you need to go into their router and turn off some services. And we haven't gotten to those services yet. Okay. Those services you might have heard about are DHCP and DNS. This is the service that automatically gives IP addresses from a pool and then DNS is the domain naming service, or it translates the text to IP addresses. I'll write Facebook.com, but the computer don't know what that is. DNS translates Facebook.com into the IP address so it knows where to go find Facebook. Okay. So those two services we'll talk about in the future. Now, so a router responsibility um, is to look at packets. Then they look at packets it's going to look at the uh, destination IP address and the subnet mask. It looks at those two pieces so it can figure out, is this packet in this network or does it need to go out this, outside of this network? But here's the problem. What happens if uh, some data comes into a router and the way it's packaged up does not have an IP address? Then what you need to be using is a browser, this one. And what we say is packages that come in with IP address information are routable. That means a router can move them. If a routable protocol comes in, a router can then route it to where it needs to go. 
But if that protocol does not contain an IP address, then it doesn't have any way to route it. It does, I don't know what to do with this. It, there's no IP address. <coughs> so you would need a browser. A browser, when it receives a package that doesn't have any IP address information, the B stands for bridge. So browser is a bridging router, which means if a package comes in and it does not have IP address information, it can then forward or discard frames based on destination map address. So that's what a browser is. You won't see a lot of routers. It will be on a certification test. And that, what I just said is on there. When a protocol is not routable, meaning it doesn't have IP address information, then the bridging function will then allow it to forward or discard frames based on destination map address. So you're just kind of taking those two answers and sticking them together. Alright, so a quick review. Um, at the network layer, the addressing is IP address. The PDU, or what does data look like, is called the packet, which is really just a frame with a source and destination IP address attached. And then the router is how do we connect different types of networks, or if it's your network and it's the last router on the way out of your network, it's called, nickname is called a gateway, and if it's a router between you and your destination, and it's not your gateway, it's called a hop. So when you're reading in the book, you'll know what those terms mean interchangeably. They'll say, blah, 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 and go to the gateway, blah, blah, blah. you go, oh, that's the last router on the way out of my network. If they say, uh, tried to get to Facebook, and it took 12 hops, you know there was 12 routers between you and Facebook that weren't yours. And a browser, which allows you to pass non-routable protocols or protocols that do not contain IP addresses if one should come in to your network. Alright, so we have a choice. I'm going to do this one off camera.